Jingle bells, hockey gear smells, but Brock Faber leads the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride a Minnesota wild sleigh. Hey, Kirsten and I discuss which wild players are on Santa's naughty and nice list, as well as dive into Faber and Kirill Kaprizov numbers so far this year. As always, we're presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Talk North, Royal Credit Union, Livia, Jim Beam, and Greenbelt. You're listening to Season 5, Episode 208. Want to make sure Soda Stick is underneath your Christmas tree next week? Place all orders by midnight Tuesday, December 19th for guaranteed delivery by Christmas Day. Soda Stick has all your Minnesota Wild and Minnesota Sports team apparel year-round. Smash that Bardown Beauties code at checkout for 15% off all purchases at SodaStick.com. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition. Like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart, Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Claremont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's up? Bar Down Beauties, episode 208. I'm Jesse Pierce, writer for NHL.com. She's Kirsten Kroll, in arena host, the face of the Minnesota Wild. Kirsten, what's going on? How are you? We've been seeing a lot of each other because the Minnesota Wild have been back in action in St. Paul. So that's been fun. Um, I feel you don't realize we're going to be really seeing a lot of each other from this point on, like starting late this week. Yeah. All of January. Yeah. Like there's a there's been a decent amount going on, but there's about to be a lot going on. Yeah, no, I don't look ahead because I don't want to scare myself and like stress myself out. I'm trying to be better about my anxiety, and that's one way of doing it is just being surprised and then complaining about it later and during. So, you know, there's that. That's fair. See, I like to prepare in advance, so right now I'm kind of having that like panic stress, like knowing how crazy life is going to get. Like I kind of wanted the after the holidays like slowly ease into the new year no like we're just going right in body checking into 2024 body checking that might be my favorite hockey moment i cannot wait to get to that now coming up in the second segment uh first things first a little housekeeping before we dive into this week's episode buttes live next thursday december 28th 7 p.m at wild boar in oakdale hope to see you all there obviously we've got giveaways we've got grain belt specials um and you get to hang out with kirsten and i which is so much fun everybody knows it also a reminder soda stick you can use code bar down beauties by tonight which is tuesday at midnight to guarantee shipping for Christmas. They've got tons of new drops coming up this weekend as well, so stay tuned to sodastick.com. Also a little uh, fun, exciting news for Bar Down Beauties listeners. Thanks to you guys, we have been named a finalist in the 2024 Sports Podcast Awards in the Hockey Podcast category. You guys can vote for us to be named the best hockey podcast of 2024 by casting your vote at sportspodcastgroup.com. We'll share more of those links, but thanks to you guys for helping us achieve that next step in our podcasting career. Who would have thunk, Kirsten? Bar Down Beauties just continuing to make a little little splishy splash in the podcast world. You know, not me. So that was a very exciting text to wake up to this morning. Um, (laughs) Yeah, so I'm just thankful. It's exciting. And it gives you kind of like a extra bit of momentum heading into the new year. Like sometimes we all know hockey season gets to be such a long season. So especially too, once you kind of like hit a point, like past that halfway point in the regular season, it's kind of like, Ooh, yep, feeling kind of feeling it a little bit, just kind of the weight of how long it's been. So it's stuff like this that just kind of gives you the like, oh, like people listen, like extra kind of boost, you know? Yeah, you guys are the best. I love saying hi to you guys at the games. Chris and I have been running around taking photos of ourselves more often than not because we need to work with that. It's for the gram. It's for the people. It's the content. Even more than that, I love the people. Shout out Allie Cook who take pictures of us taking pictures <laughs> for each other. That is honestly even better than the we'll actual be Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes always. Never, never any shame there. Uh, let's dive into this week's episode finally. The thing that you guys are all here for. Uh, it's the holiday season. We're taking off of next week because of Christmas and because of the holidays, there's a lot going on. So we will not have a new episode next week. So I want to ask you this week, are the Minnesota Wilds, Kirsten, on the naughty or nice list? And which player might top 
each list. Let's put our Santa caps on. Who's getting coal? Who's getting the it gift of the year uh, for that? And in general, where do you think the Minnesota Wild fall? So we're starting with players, not your nice list. Yes. You can nice just name list? like three. What? Okay. Nice list. Hands down, Brock Faber. He has been nothing but nice and giving to everyone in the team and every single Minnesota Wild fan. That man has logged two straight games, over 30 minutes of ice time. Just unbelievable. Rookie season. I love Brock Faber. We're going to get into Brock Faber later. Don't steal all the thunder just yet. That's another I'm not, segment. but I just got excited. He's on the nice list, okay? Um, who else is on the nice list? I think Matt Boldy has found his way onto the nice list as mm. well. As of late, finding his groove. Um, and Philip Gustafson, also on the nice yeah. list. Those are all good. Those are all very solid nice list candidates. Congratulations to those guys getting the presence of the year um, for making Santa's nice list. Way to go. On the naughty list, I'll, take, I'll tackle the naughty list because why not? Um, mm-hmm. And I can't say naughty list without like that naughty list but i don't mean it this way i right is that weird something's wrong with me something's wrong with me i listen to santa baby too much i'm not sure i don't know rewind refresh (laughs) reset i wish i could just move on from what just happened but here we are (laughs) (laughs) the naughty list they've been bad they're getting coal um i'm sorry kirill kaprizov he's going to have to talk top that naughty list again we'll get into more of why uh later on in this segment but i just think kirill He's he's not on the nice list, and I think he's now sanctioned down into the official naughty list. Sorry, Kirill. Mm-hmm. Hate to see it for you. Um, I'm waiting for you to name one player, and if you do not, I will scream it from the rooftops. John Merrill. John Merrill yes. is obviously on the naughty list. Uh, you know what? He might be number one on the naughty list. Um, he He did look a little better in recent games at home. I thought he wasn't as atrocious, I guess, is what I would say. So I'll give him that. But yeah, definitely the naughty list. Don't know why he's not sitting in the press box with that lump of coal alongside us, but maybe sooner rather than later, we'll see uh, John Merrill on that naughty list as well. I'm also going to go with, hmm, hmm, that's, this is tough because really nobody's been bad enough aside from John Merrill to be like, oh, you definitely, you're a shoe in here. Did you have a third that you're also, because Goose, there's one that comes to mind, but not necessarily for his play. Just demeanor. Okay. Okay. Brandon Duhame. Brandon Duhame just, just cause he's a badass. He gives me those vibes. Yeah. Just strictly on the vibes, Brandon Duhame makes the naughty list. And Marcus Foligno, because technically fighting is a, is a naughty f- fact, right? So, like, you could technically argue Marcus Foligno just for his, also, the role that he is intended to play. True. But <clears throat> I guess where I'm coming from with that, <clears throat> and I keep coughing, I'm so sorry, everybody listening, just kind of, like, strictly on the vibes... Yeah. Brandon Duhame, you talk about Jewel Erickson Eck having a punchable face. I feel Brandon Duhame has that for opponents. Like, am I wrong? Marcus Felino is more of like a pest, I would say. Whereas like Brandon Duhame, like I feel like he just has a punchable face. He just because he looks, he's got that badass look. Like I've, we've we've talked yes. about it before. He's the guy that'd be wearing a leather jacket, roll up his sleeves with a cigarette. Like he's definitely the kid in detention all the time. So Absolutely. yeah, naughty. Felino would be on the naughty list. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I had this is it. a family friendly <laughs> podcast. I'm just kidding, but I had to say it. It was right there. It was ripe for the taking. We had to make it a little fun. Uh, let us know who you guys would put on the naughty or nice list for Minnesota Wild players. Um, the Minnesota Wild team as a whole, Kirsten. I think for me, they've shifted onto the nice list. I think mm. they've been doing a lot of good things that, you know what? This Christmas, again, they will be placed on Santa's nice list for me. What about you? Um... Partially just because I'm pessimistic. They're still on my naughty list. Also, I want them to win it more in regulation than I do in a shootout. Mm. And so recency bias, whatnot, my lack of being convinced just yet, I'm still, they're still kind of in the doghouse for me. So the naughty list. That's fair. Yeah, you can't be giving away points to Western Conference uh, opponents. That's not But shout great. out to taking Vancouver to the shootout. I was impressed. Yes, that was some solid, uh, again, Gustafson, solid defense. Speaking of defense, 
Faberlicious. So delicious. I just, I'm really good at that song. If you guys ever catch me at karaoke, I will be singing Fergalicious and doing the entire rap. But this one is about Brock Faber. Faberlicious. As Kirsten had mentioned, back to back career high ice time, logging over 30 minutes with Spurge and Brode out. He is 21 years old, you guys. I had to remind myself of that. Like, holy cow. Because the way he speaks in the locker room, is just beyond me. Like he is a seasoned vet through and through. He is trusted in all situations, even by John Hines, who has now come in. I asked John Hines this the other game. Um, you know, is does Brock Faber remind you of anybody in particular? I mean, Hines has coached Roman Yossi, and he's seen other one. He's like, I've never seen a rookie defenseman like this, a rookie defenseman that you're putting against the opposition's top line and to log those minutes and to just be doing everything right. He's been elevated to the top power play unit. He's on the top PK. Um Kristen, we knew he was going to be good. We knew Brock Faber was going to be good. We saw what he was able to do with the Gophers. We saw what he was able to do with Team USA. Um, And, you know, there was this high prospect probability. But I didn't think I knew just how freaking good he was going to be. Because certainly coming into this year, you were going to have to replace Matt Dumba. Brock Faber had that opportunity to obviously be in the top four. He immediately jumped in and did just that. Like, it's been absolutely incredible to see what Brock Faber has done this year. I just, I'm shocked. I am too. And I'm so happy for the kid. Like he's just been so good. And you know how much I love good defense. He has been just everything for this team and really stepped up to the occasion. You talk about Brody and being out Spurgeon being out losing Dumba essentially in the off season because we couldn't afford him. Um, He's really taken the opportunity and sees the moment. And just to have the poise he does, 21 years old, and just kind of the consistency, the hockey IQ that he possesses, like, this kid is unbelievable. I am just so impressed. In that overtime, I think, it, I can't remember, because they both went to overtime naturally, right, where he was just gassed. He was out there for, like, two minutes of that three-on-three. Three, and he still had the wherewithal to look at the player coming down into the corner and to make the play. And, you know, it was just those type of things. You're talking about that high hockey IQ. I mean, you can't teach that. That is an innate sense. It's very hard to teach hockey IQ. And Brock is just so smart when he is on the ice. It's why they trust him in so many of the situations. Because really, you know, I think when we looked at the pairing of Jonas Brodeen and Brock Faber together, we maybe thought, oh, okay, well, Broads can cover up Faber's mistakes. I think Faber has done a lot of covering up of mistakes for Broads and for Jake Middleton now. I mean, I never thought that pairing was going to be as fantastic as it has been. I love it. I'm kind of really digging Fabes and Middleton there. Um, Where's the Kevin Fiala regret? Do we regret the Kevin Fiala move now? Obviously, Kevin Fiala is still a very, uh, what's I won't say excellent. Yeah, excellent. He's been hurt a little bit this season. Um, Still a solid forward without question, Mm -hmm. but I think Minnesota kind of won out. I think there is no longer a Fiala regret in Minnesota. What do you think? I would agree with that. I mean, you have Kirill Kaprizov, who, granted, has been underwhelming this season. So take that as you will. But Matt Boldy even really stepping up. I took the liberty to look up Kevin Fiala's stats so far this season. One thing about Kevin Fiala is he is an assist machine. But so far this season, six goals. So, I mean, Matt Boldy has more than that. And he even got off to a slow start. So I don't think... Again, Kevin Fiala, he's an exciting player for sure. Skilled, talented. But... I think especially looking at this Minnesota Wild team, the talent that we have and the needs that we had, we needed a defenseman more than we needed another forward. So Brock Faber, I feel if anything, L.A. maybe sees how good he's doing and is just kind of feeling that sting a little bit more than we are. You know what? Uh, Speaking of goal struggling scoring. Um, Kirill still struggling, missed twice in the shootout, which I don't know that I've ever seen. I'm sure it's happened naturally, but I don't recall. I feel like Kirill is one of those guys that, Hey, he's going to come up. He's going to score. Didn't shoots high and wide. I believe on both of them. Uh, Kirill has eight goals, 16 assists in 28 games. Now I looked up last year, last year, he had 17 goals and 18 assists in that same span. Um, his shot total also, Kirsten, is the other thing that's concerning to me. Now he's at an averaging just over three shots per game, but more often than not this year, he's only mustered two shots. Now, certainly shot tracking and shot counting can be very difficult. These are just going by official numbers. So I'm sure there are games where maybe one or two have been missed, but it just seems he's only got 89 total this year. Last year, he had 261 total in 67 games um, and was averaging 3.89. 
it just, it still doesn't feel like it's there. It still does not feel like it's clicking. Now, ironically, I saw this morning that Alexander Ovechkin is also declined in his shot production and in his goal scoring. I think he's 16 less than his normal and Ovechkin has been around forever. So I don't know if there's a Russian connection there or if it's because Ovi's getting old. I don't, I'm still hesitant to blame it on Kirill being injured or battling with a physical thing because I think we saw him cycle in that overtime period uh, against Vancouver where he literally mm-hmm. was just circling and it looked like Kirill. It's just, again, something is off. There is just something missing. And I'm so frustrated because I don't know what it is, Kirsten. No, I agree. And I think you literally touched on every single thing, like talking about that overtime, seeing him skate around the ice and just his puck possession that he did have. Like I was blown away. I was like, look at Kirill right now. Just literally in control, but I don't know what it is either. I think the very easy scapegoat is to say there's still that lingering injury from last season. And I don't want to say it is or it isn't because I'm not Kirill. I don't know the pains that he's physically feeling when he's out on the ice. So I think it's easy to sit from behind a computer with a microphone and say, that's what it is. Like all of that. I don't know. So I mean, I can take people like Dean Evison's word for it when he says he thinks that what it is, but I agree. I was at just at this point, it just something's off. I don't know what it is. My only guess is like maybe there's a mental factor that he's got to get past somehow. But I mean, how are any of us supposed to know that? You know? Well, I mean, John Hines has even separated him from Matt Zuccarello and mm-hmm. put him with Jules Erickson Eck and Matt Boldy. But Matt Boldy and Jules Erickson Eck are carrying that line. I mean, Kirill is is certainly there, and I. I hate being so hard on him. I want him to like succeed and I I want to see the best. And naturally I think regression is going to happen. I mean, it's hard to Mm -hmm. maintain the pace that Kirill had been maintaining for the past two seasons, but also damn man, like I'm expecting it too. Like I want you to be that guy and I I need you to be that guy. Um, It's just very interesting because I don't know what else you really do. I don't think Kirill deserves to be demoted by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not suggesting that, but there's just, are you? Do you think you should put I him on the move second him line? To the second line. He's I mean, granted last season there was no reason to demote him from that top line, but it, you look at everything and granted yes, the Wild are also doing better, so maybe not, but maybe just give it a shot, see what happens. Do I think he needs to be scratched up in the penalty box? There was a moment earlier this season I did say yes, but no, that's not what I'm saying now. I just think he's been consistently on that top line. He's been underperforming. If it was any other player, he would have been demoted by now, you know? And we know him from past seasons to be that star player, but he hasn't been playing like it this year. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's it's driving me insane. It really, really is. Like, it's very, very interesting and and curious to see how it plays out Uh, a couple more notes wrapping up this first segment all about the minnesota wild milestones of many mark andre Fleury returning to pittsburgh tonight pat maroon hits 300 points i feel like this year though kirsten there are less and less milestones to be reached does it feel like that way to you like maybe it's just me because i'm noticing it within the game notes like oh yeah it's kind of boring like i need more milestones not that Flurry returning to Pittsburgh as a milestone per se. It, given, mm-hmm. he, well, I don't even know if he starts. We're recording this on a Monday before the Pittsburgh game. I have to imagine he starts. Yeah, I would imagine that he would as well. Otherwise, it would be another Riley Tufty situation turned to play your first NHL game in Minnesota <laughs> and you get scratched after you bought tickets for your whole family. Um, <laughs> I feel like that's what not starting Marc Andre Flurry in Pittsburgh tonight would be like. Yeah. Uh, we don't know how well that one went over. Um, <laughs> Anyways, where was I going with this? Oh, the milestone. <laughs> There's no milestones. We should, yeah. I don't know. We come like up last with a new season, milestone. Yeah, I did feel like there was a lot, but I don't know. At the same time, like, yeah, they're cool, but I don't feel they're necessary. Like, yeah. I think even too, like, as far as the players go, like, yeah, they're like, somebody brings it to their attention. They're like, yeah, that's cool. But like, they're not even, you know, they just move forward. It's I love, a uh, I love Felino's chirp at Maroon when he reached 300 against Vancouver on Saturday. Uh, he picked up that second assist on the, who was that? Felino and who got a tip on it? Who scored? Gaudreau. Freddie Gaudreau. Yes, yes, that that goal. Um, because I noticed Felino quickly grabbed the puck. Like, he was pretty quick to go in and be like, oh, he turned around and went and grabbed it. And I asked him about it. He was like, yeah, I've uh, we've been talking about it all season. But Patty hasn't done anything. He hasn't scored a point in quite some time, so I forgot. And I was like, oh, shit, I got to go back and get the puck because we locked eyes and he looked at me like, go get me my puck. And Felino scurried on over to go get it, which I thought was kind of funny. 
I love that. I feel like though I feel like Felino can be bros with anybody on that team, even opposing teams, but for whatever like him and Pat Maroon, I feel like they just vibe. Yeah. I feel like they're kind of the same similar type of person. Like Absolutely. let's go out there. Kind of not not quite Bash Brothers, but maybe like a little bit Bash Brothers. Little bit. Right? Mm-hmm. Who knows? A little bit. Uh, before we close out this segment, the wild week ahead, because we are taking next week off, we'll also split it into two parts where we look at next week's games. <coughs> Excuse me, as well. <coughs> we'll get there. Still yep, alive? that was good. That was I'm good. Uh, <laughs> let's start with this week. Kirsten, they are at Pittsburgh tonight, Monday. They are at Boston tomorrow, Tuesday. And then they are home versus Montreal Thursday and versus Boston on Saturday. Who do you got for those first four? All right, so they're going to get a win against Pittsburgh. They're mm-hmm. going to lose to Boston on Tuesday. They're going to win against Montreal, and then they're going to get an overtime win against Boston on Saturday. Ooh, that is – those are well thought out, I think. I really enjoy that. I think they beat Pitt tonight as well. I think they lose tomorrow to Boston. I think it's going to be an overtime win against Montreal. I don't know why, but I because I feel like they'll play to Montreal's level. So I just think that that mm. could be an overtimer. Um, and then Boston, I think it's going to be a regulation win. So a little different, but also the same. Let's go into next week. They have Detroit at home on the 27th, and they are at Winnipeg on the 30th. And then they come back for that home-and-home home series to host the Jets on New Year's Eve at 1 p.m. Who do you got? What do you got? They lose to Detroit, and then they split with Winnipeg. So they'll win at Winnipeg. I think they lose at home to Winnipeg. <gasps> just ruining the new year. I think they, they win all three. I'm just feeling feeling really? the wild. No, that's – I know you think – is Detroit still a wagon? I think Detroit's still a wagon. I'm going – yeah, we're going wins across the board. Um, yeah, let us know what you guys think for the wild week ahead, for the wild week ahead the next two weeks. It'll certainly be interesting. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey guys, Jesse Pierce here for Livia Weight Control Centers. It is time to give yourself the gift of good health. It's Livia's pre-Black Friday event. Join Livia today and get up to 50% off your own personalized program. That's right. 50% off your own personalized program. Livia has been a proven doctor recommended weight loss program voted number one year after year. Make the call and you could lose up to 10 pounds in your first two weeks or even up to 20 pounds before the year 2024. Talk about one heck of an offer to kick off the new year. I know for me, Livia has been an absolute game changer. Thanks to the one-on-one support I've received from my team at the Livia Center in Woodbury, I've lost more than 30 pounds and gotten back the energy this busy mom of three needs to get through yet another NHL hockey season. I'm telling you guys, this sign-up is one you do not want to miss. Join Livia today and save up to 50%. Visit Livia.com, that's L-I-V-E-A dot com, or call 855-GO-LIVIA. This is a limited time offer, so be sure you join right now. Visit Livia.com or call 855-GO-LIVIA Livia. Livia is voted Minnesota's best weight loss program three years in a row. Check it out. We're back. Kirsten, tis the season for new coaches as well. Um, it seems like all the teams that have now replaced their coach, Ottawa, let's keep an eye on that one because DJ Smith is probably not going to make it through the end of the week, maybe not even the end of today. As of 10.56, he is still the Ottawa Senators head coach. But the teams that have made changes, Edmonton Oilers, fire their coach, and they are 10-5-0 and since that change. The Wild, obviously, firing Dean Evson, 7-2-0 and since that change. The Blues, who just very abruptly fired Craig Berube, uh, chief out there, are 2-0, and uh, 2-0-0, oh, excuse me, since that. What is the deal behind that? Like, is it literally just the messaging? I know we talked about it when they let go, D- let go of Dean because, again, a lot of the team, you know, the systems were still in place while they went on that four-game win streak. Um, how do you think that really translates? Like, I'm literally curious about it now. There's two ways that I'm thinking about going with it. I'll save the second one for later because I feel like people are going to laugh at my analogy. And so I'm (laughs) I'm preparing for it, but I'm just going to wait a second. I think part of it is that new messaging. Um, I think it instills a new vibe in the locker room. You know, there's a new energy um, and even probably a sense of – a fresh start for a lot of guys too, such as using Matt Boldy as an example, a guy who really had his back against the wall and was really struggling coaching change. Something switched in him. I couldn't tell you what it is, but I think just that mental factor, I don't think 
we really pay enough attention to to how much it really affects these athletes and then my analogy that i was going to use it's like kind of like that feng shui like when it's like you need to rearrange a room to change the yeah. energy of that room i think the same thing kind of goes for coaching you just something needs to change change it up a little bit and suddenly there's new life in the space you know what i think that's a perfect analogy i really like that, that was bravo Thank you. I thought everyone was going to laugh at me hearing that. So I mean, it's just you. me here. So maybe everybody else will laugh at you, but I certainly maybe. enjoyed it. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. I thought it was spot on. You know, I found it interesting. I am working on a feature for the January game day program all about John Hines. Uh, shameless plug, go buy that game day program next month or buy this month's pro program about Marco Rossi. Mm -hmm. um, but Brock Faber had mentioned one of the things that stood out to him when John Hines came into the room, because obviously, you know, all the players were very clear, like they felt incredibly guilty. But Faber had said something about John Hines noting that, hey, I'm not here to pull you guys out of these struggles. I'm jumping in the trench with you and we're going to get out together, which I think really resonates, you know, especially in hockey where it is such a team sport to have the coach mm -hmm. and not to say that Dean Evson wasn't in there with them either. But I think for those guys to have that coach with that strong sense of belief behind them too, and, and to really just say something like that, I think speaks volumes. And then Pat Maroon on the same topic had, had said, you know what we did. We, there was a lot of shame in the locker room for us losing and for us forcing you know, Dean out. And he's like, I won't say anything bad ab about Dean. It's not Dean's fault. So, I mean, I do, I think you're right. I think it's just, it's a matter of changing up the space. It's a matter of getting something different in there. And then certainly playing with a little bit of that guilt, I have to think, uh, pushes you forward. Cause I know in Edmonton too, uh, Connor McDavid had mentioned, he's like, I didn't want Jay out. You know, I didn't expect that St. Louis, a lot of the players feeling the same way about chief too, saying, you know, he was, he was our guy. That one I think was a bigger surprise than to most than the other ones, but mm -hmm. very interesting. Uh, let's wrap up this week's episode with, as always, our favorite hockey moment of the week. Kirsten, I know you have one ready, I raring do. to go. Uh, let's, let's see it. Mine is a selfish one. I'm going to be selfish. Sometimes I sit back and I've been thinking about this. I've caught myself a few times this week, whether I just be like at the rink or just sitting in my home office, like getting work done where I just sit back and I just really hits me out of nowhere, like how lucky we are to like have this as our job that we get to do what we get to do. And I think just being at the wild game and having people come up to you and just say like, hey, I love the podcast or you know, anything of that nature, um, just recognizing the work that we do put in, the supporters that we do have. It's been a lot more recently. I don't know what the change has been, but it's been a lot more recently, and it's just awesome. I love when people come up and say hi, and just kind of knowing that there's actually people on the other side of me and Jesse's shenanigans from our weekly record <laughs> that actually listen to what we have to say, it just makes me warm and fuzzy inside. I don't disagree. It is. It's a nice feeling because, you know... You guys may think that this pays the bills. This doesn't pay the bills at all. In fact, it pays no. very little of the bills. If anything, it may pay a bar tab here or there. Uh, yeah. But we do it because we, we love it and because we enjoy making the content for you guys as long as you're consuming it. So, um, you know, if you guys keep watching, we'll keep going. So we do appreciate that. And it is always fun when you guys make those little comments to us. Not that we need the slap on the back every time because we're probably still going to do it. But <clears throat> it's a good reminder, and as Kirsten said, to make us very grateful. My favorite moment is, so post-game sometimes, especially during early games like Saturday's afternoon game, <clears throat> the players' kids all come running into the players' locker room like while we're doing our media scrums. And I just love that so much. That's just like my favorite part of covering the team sometimes. Because not only do you get to see the guys being dads, right? You get to see that, you know, there. But the kids are just so... It's, you know, an everyday thing, but they're also just so excited to see, like, all the media people and to get their candy and to, like, I don't know. There's just something about that that I'm always, like, it's funny because I feel bad. I totally tune out of the scrum then and stop listening to what they're saying because I just watch the kids kind of interact with each other and, like, watch how they behave. And I just think it's the darlingest thing ever. Um, and, yeah, I just, that's my favorite moment of the week. My other favorite moment, less darling. But I think it's kind of funny, and I shouldn't laugh. Ryan Lindgren, uh, I believe he's a Minnesota. He's a Minnesota kid, right? <clears throat> I think so. not the goalie, 
the Charlie defenseman. Charlie Lindgren, St. Cloud State Charlie alumni, Lindgren Washington is... Capitals, my very first interview ever. Well, that's, uh, now I have to, yes, Char- Ryan Lindgren is from Minnesota. <laughs> I had to just confirm that. But for some reason, I second-guessed myself. What What do I know? Uh, Rangers defenseman. I saw a video this morning. He has been plowed over like the past four games straight. Now, naturally, and I think three or four of those hits were clean. The other one, Pasta, definitely went uh, for head contact there, and that wasn't great, and it was targeting and all of that. But the other one's like, buddy, keep your head up, man. Like, know that the player's coming. Like, I mean, he's just getting rocked in the corner every time. Like, dude, just pay attention. Like, it just kind of, I just found it kind of funny because seeing him in sequence, like, Game one, game two, twice in the same game. <laughs> just like boom, Gosh. boom, boom. Like, let's get it together, man. Dude, I think this was like a week or two ago, but I would like to retract one of my favorite hockey moments. Insert a week or two ago. I don't remember exactly when it was, but that Senators Panthers game where literally everyone was in the penalty box. Everyone oh, yeah. on the ice received a penalty. And then you <laughs> literally see the coaches on the bench counting the players that they do have to see who can <laughs> they can put on the ice. There was more coaches on that bench than players. I love a good hockey fight. I loved I that. That, truly that was the one was, where he was That's like, going to go down as one of the most iconic moments of this entire year. And then that was the one where he was like, the ref was like, everyone on the ice roughing. Yes. Right? Yeah. Classic. It was incredible. Yes. Honestly, more of that, please. More. In Minnesota. Yeah, it's been pretty quiet. There weren't even penalties in that Calgary game until like the second period, which apparently I did. (laughs) Hmm. I mentioned it. I just said, wow, there's been no penalties in this game. And then like a minute later, there was a bunch of penalties. Way to go, Jesse. I also feel like I have this like well of useless information that like other people would literally be like, why like why do you know that why is that important such as like the picture of mgk and Connor mcdavid from the all-star game it's just burned in my memory (laughs) another picture ingrained in my mind is when it was a national predators game years ago but looking at the penalty box they had like literally five guys in the sin bin mark or excuse me mike fisher right in the middle of it like it's just one of those things man i love that that's one of my favorite things about the game it's so fun mike fisher uh husband of carrie underwood power couple of the national hockey league power couple of the national hockey league we didn't touch on taylor swift how do you feel that minnesota was the only place that she hasn't come to in the Travis did you Kelsey see my tweet tour? yesterday no i tweeted about it did you was it were you are you bitter i am bitter yes like odd. girly i get it you're busy i still love you clearly but why like of you had you had the room in your schedule. You've gone literally everywhere else except us. You went to Green Bay, literally Green <laughs> Bay, Wisconsin, but not Minneapolis. Like, how do you not take that a little personally, you know? Like, I, girly, I get it. You had a movie premiere a few days later that week, but I just still, I don't know. You got a private jet. I mean, yeah. We know you've been understand. putting the miles on that. It's like, did she hate U.S. Bank Stadium? Like, did she not like it when she was here? No, she loved it. I felt it from my seats <laughs> in that stadium. I felt it. Well, there we go. Uh, See, no get... one blamed me for bringing up Taylor Swift because I did not bring it up. Jesse did. Yeah, because now it's a, it's it's part of you. It's part of us. It's, it's always been of... a part of me. I know, but it's fun to mention. I just always like to get your your take. I did find that odd though. I was like, hmm, it's interesting that I think this is. I is it officially the only one she hasn't gone to? Uh, there's like one or two other ones she hasn't been to, but she was literally on tour. Okay. Well, then there you go. Uh, that's going to do it for this week's episode of Bar Down Beauties. Uh, don't forget, we will not have an episode next week. Go back, listen to all of our episodes from the entire year to appease the missing of the Bar Down Beauties. Um, don't forget to use code Bar Down Beauties at checkout for sodastick.com for 15% off your purchases of all things. They'll have new things dropping on the 23rd. As always, Livia is also offering fantastic deals if you want to lose weight this uh, winter right now even before the New Year's resolutions, or do it after the New Year's. Either way, mention Jesse. Sentia Greenbelt, we've got our next La- Buttes Live on the 28th at Oakdale's Wild Boar. We'll see you guys out there. Uh, and Jim Beam, cheers to you. Cheers to me. Also, Royal Credit Union, less fee, more free. You guys are awesome. We will be at the games Thursday, Saturday. Come say hi. Come say hey. 
Give us a high five. What's up? We love it. You guys are the very best. Comment below. Subscribe, rate, share, all the good things. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, however you celebrate to you and your family and friends. And we will catch you. I'm going to say it. We'll catch you in 2024. <laughs> See you Cringe. next year. Cringe. <laughs> no, it's so great. Ew. I regret. Okay. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Near, 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 near.